17, we made it. Remember 12, 21, 12 when the world ended? Good times, right? Here we are five years later. I'm sure you are super pumped to be here. 2017 Ram TV, new year, new show. Well, sort of. New show how? We're adding all sorts of different types of things. I am, anyways, on my end. A little more personality. You remember when we used to do Ram Talks? Yeah, those were fun. I wish we could do those again. We can't. Look at the corner I'm stuck in. But that's all right, because we're going to add a little more personality to this. I'm going to give you a little more flavor. So I apologize if you enjoyed pure, objective news. That's gone out the window. Woo! New year, new media! So I'm, we're going to get started because it's a new show, and I'm sure you have lots of questions like, what's happening this year? Where's Aaron's glasses? Did he get LASIK? No, I didn't. I can't afford that. Is he going to continue not wearing glasses? Well, I don't want to give you all the answers. Then why would you keep watching? So let's get started. You're watching Ram TV. According to a report, some of the key members of the Star Wars film franchise are meeting to try and discuss how to move forward with the Princess Leia character. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Leia was pegged to appear in both Episode 8 and Episode 9, including a scene where she meets with Luke Skywalker and another scene where she confronts her a-hole son, Kylo Ren. Governor Tuck, I should have expected to find you holding Vader's leash. I recognized your foul stench when I was brought on board. Charming to the last. This year's movie, Episode 8, has already finished filming, while Episode 9 hasn't even started. Filmmakers could decide to entirely write Leia out of Episode 9 and then reshoot her scenes. Of course, that's uncharted territory for the series, and not many people would be very happy about Leia being written out, although I don't know what you do in this circumstance. Carrie Fisher was cast as Princess Leia Organa in 1977. Fisher was 19 years old at that time. Fisher died one day before her mother, Debbie Reynolds. Reynolds is best known for her film, Singing in the Rain, where she starred alongside Gene Kelly. Both Fisher and Reynolds had a memorial on January 5th at Beverly Hills. Let's go ahead and take this chance now after I've depressed you and give Ray a call. Let's find out what's happening new in technology. Hey everyone, it's me Ray again. If you're a big tech fan like I am, you know that from today or tomorrow technically, 2 to 7th is CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, and it is one of the most exciting times for us tech fans. This is where new cars are typically announced or integrations with cars are announced. TVs are announced, um, other home gadgets as well. Um, this year, we will see Faraday Future's first car that is meant to compete against Tesla's cars. So that's very exciting, but they have announced that yet. At least not today, maybe tomorrow. I believe their press conference is actually on Friday, but I can't seem to remember the day right now. But talking about cars, this is my first story. Nissan is prepared to announce, or by the time you see this, has announced that it's integrating Microsoft Cortana into their cars. Microsoft has had a troublesome history with their software and cars. They partnered up with Ford years ago for their Ford Sync, Microsoft Sync. Um, platform for cars and it was hit, hit or miss. There's actually a lawsuit um, I believe that was in regards to the software about that but with the Cortana Nissan thing Cortana is one of the best personal assistants I have used. I've used Siri. I have pretty much toyed around with Google with, with Google Assistant and I'll and Cortana, well, of course, I can I come from Windows Phone where, when she was first introduced, and I really like I really like Cortana. I miss Cortana. You know, I used to have the Cortana app on my iPhone, but I had to delete it because I have too many apps. I had to go through and delete some stuff, which that should be another video. Aaron, remind me to do a video about that. How to clean up your iPhone? It's actually really simple, but I'll go through the steps. But yes, the first story: Nissan has announced that it will integrate Cortana into its cars. What cars? They haven't announced it yet, so maybe next week I'll tell you what cars um, Cortana is in. So maybe 
it could be retrofitted to your current Nissan car or if there's a new car announcement today with Cortana support then if you're in the market for a new car then maybe that'll be an option my last story which is Lenovo announcing their Legion brand for their own gaming laptops if you're a gamer you know the names Alienware and a lot of Asus's laptops as well are known to be very good with gaming of course Alienware is synonymous for with gamers well now lenovo has the earlier legion brand and with that the y720 is the the top tier one under the legion brand it has a core i7 cabby lake based processor a matte 4k display and it starts around 1400 i believe and it will come out in april that is actually pretty good and i i do believe it has a, a a Adreno GP as well. I can't remember the the spec name of it. I'm sorry, but it's of course all over the the the, the internet. I found out through another third another another sorry broadcaster slash very reliable, very respected news site called The Verge. Um, Let's little shout out to them, but go, going back to the Lenovo and Legion brand, especially for people who do not know about gaming and the specifics that you need to have to even run a game, this is actually pretty good because Alienware has a reputation for being for gamers and a lot of the designs of their laptops are, yes, they're bigger, they are uh, look a lot more futuristic and they look more novelty instead of the everyday you know because a lot because a lot of people do not want a glowing laptop on glowing laptop keyboards with the rainbows or reds and all that or razor laptops as well you know a lot of people don't want that kind of big hardware they want something small they want something thin so you know the latitudes the um other other Dell, Dell laptops and all that they sell well. Of course, of course the Lenovo Z Yoga line as well. Um, they like that kind of form factor where they can say where it can be portable. And if you're a gamer and you have those laptops, you know, technically it's portable, but it's heavy. Same thing with these Lenovo Legion, um, laptops, game laptops. They are for gamers. Are they the best? Um, the jury is out. I didn't list all of the specs for you all, but those were the two that I saw that really meant a lot to me. The display, 4K displays, I could actually watch 4K content, and the Kaby Lake processor, which is the latest in Intel, um, and, well, the latest from Intel, and those are the two things that I tell people to look out for, for sure. Um, ports and all that, there's dongles, you know. You know my feelings about the angles in the last episode. But, yeah. So, it just really does make sense for Lenovo to do this. Um, they had a partnership with, I believe, Intel. But that pretty much fizzled out in to introduce Legion. On top of that, if you're a parent or you're someone who has the money to buy someone a gaming laptop... You know the brand Lenovo has been around for years. They are tr they are a trusted source for very good laptops. So why not buy them a gaming laptop from from Lenovo under the Legion brand? But I want to know what are your thoughts. I don't have a gaming laptop. I don't PC game. I am a console gamer. Um, I know Aaron does P PS4 and he does um, co computer. I just, I'm not good with the ASWD, you know, and the mouse, you know, dialing in team speak for me to talk to people. I might just pay 60 bucks for play, for PlayStation Plus and I'll be there, you know. But let me know what you think. I will talk to you all later. Hopefully, maybe more news. Of course, this is CES. You all don't know how excited I am right now for CES. It's CES time. There's going to be so much news. You know, maybe I should do a live stream. Hmm. When I have space and when I have 
like quietness I could do that live stream but that's an idea though but yes this is Ray this this has been Ray Bolanos this is the first day of CS pre first day it gets confusing a lot of companies want like to introduce it today to be the first ones out the gate to have that hype already there and already present for their products but yes and I'll talk to you later Bye. Thanks, Ray. Oh, man, I cannot wait to have Cortana in my spaceship. Eh, car. What? I don't have a spaceship. That would be crazy. Hey, did you hear Blizzard's tired of cheaters? That's right. For weeks now, in Overwatch, there, if you've been able to use Maze Ice Wall to get outside the map and be invincible. That's right. People couldn't kill you, but man, could you mow them down. Blizzard is saying, no, uh not on our watch. And they're changing some standards. Our world is worth fighting for. This glitch that includes May's ice wall ability has been wrecking havoc on 3v3. And of course, people who hate cheating in all its ghastly forms are saying enough is enough. And after a prolonged silence on this, Blizzard has finally said they're going to do something about it. Blizzard's plan announced by the game director Jeff Kaplan on Overwatch's forum has two components. Number one. Eradicating the exploit, well, there's a great idea. Fix the problem. And number two, aggressively punishing people who use it. According to a Kotaku report, Kaplan's not 100% that fixing the exploit will actually get the job done. He says in their report, quote, there is always the chance that our fix could fail, end quote. According to Kotaku, Kaplan said the exploit was surprisingly tricky for them to track down, which is why it was able to become such the behemoth of a problem it was. However, players who decided to treat the 3v3 like a lawless land won't get off scot-free. According to Ka Kaplan, they will be taking action against those who abused the exploit. Kaplan has since gone on to apologize about how long it's taken for Blizzard to get to fixing this issue. But gamers are used to waiting, especially if you're an Elder Scrolls Online player and you've been waiting to explore some of the wonderful lands of Morrowind. Well, that may be coming up sooner than you think. Elder Scrolls Online allows you to explore many of the areas featured in the series. However, the main landmass featured in Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind Vanderfell still isn't available. But files pointing to the addition of Vanderfelt were discovered previously and again this week. As detailed on Reddit by user Floor Below, a map of the area has been data mined from the game's files, which reportedly reveals title sets of all sorts of new lands. Now, there's no guarantee that Vanderfell will be the next landmass, but it seems to me to be a no brainer. Fans love the environment, the architecture. Come on, Elder Scrolls, let's do it for the fans. Let's keep going forward, after, especially after that last release, which had such positive reviews. I hope like, you like what you saw today on Ram TV. Make sure you like, subscribe, share with your friends and family. We appreciate the support we've already gotten, but we want to keep growing that support. Because of that, I'm offering up a challenge. I will do a one hour stream for every, per, every new subscriber that we get. And I will stream games of your choice. By your choice, I of course mean we're going to go into the comments section, we're going to see the games we like to see played, and most popular game is what I will stream. Again, that's one hour of streaming for every new subscriber. I will also say this, if we reach enough, I will do a 24-hour gaming stream where we raise money and we donate money to charity. One more step. If we can add 100 new subscribers, I will do a live stream of me filming Ram TV and you can see the hot mess that is behind this camera. I mean, how much fun could you really ask for? I film it on my own, so it is definitely a mess. So let's get that out there. Let's boost those numbers and let's do a live stream filming Ram TV. I hope like you like what you saw. Make sure you like, subscribe, Share, I know I'm saying it again, but it's super important. We also have a GoFundMe page. There you can donate money. We would also really appreciate that. It allows me to buy new equipment, upgrade my current equipment, keep bringing you better and more videos. And you know, I'm doing this because I love you guys. I hope you guys love what you see. So please, please, please go donate if you can. Make sure you join us next week for video game tech and nerd culture news. Do you ram?